Less music. More talk. News Talk 1080 KSCO. It's 44 minutes past 8 a.m. In the studio with me this morning, I have Jessica and Chris Dieseldorf. They are, their business is Salsa Hente, and they have just returned from a trip to Cuba where no doubt you spent the time dancing away. Good morning to you both and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Rosie. Now, you, you met um, dancing? We did. We met dancing salsa in about 2003. Um, and we've been teaching and dancing and performing this Cuban style of salsa since 2001. And then when, so. did, you, when did you marry? 2006. Oh, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. And you just returned from Cuba, what, a couple of three weeks ago? Right. In June, we spent a couple of weeks in Havana, um, a very intensive dance and music study um, to develop ourselves as teachers and learn more about this great, um, really fun Cuban style of salsa dancing. It's not only fun, but you're both in really great shape. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that, that's one reason why we do it. And the trip to uh, Cuba was organized by Plaza Cuba. Uh, they do these trips regularly a year. Uh, we have done that the year before and we intend to continue doing that. Well, it's eventually going to want to open up completely to everybody, of course, mm -hmm. but right now it's still limited travel. But it, uh, having been there, it is a very fun place to visit, didn't you think? It's great. And you, you come away with um, just being soaked in the music and, and culture um, of Havana. It's really wonderful. Every, every street corner uh, that has a restaurant has live music playing. And you just can't can't get away from the rhythm of the the son clave is constantly in the air. So it's really it's really exciting and really inspires us to bring that flavor back to our dance classes, um, which we offer here in the Santa Cruz community. At uh, and that is at salsahente.com, and there are classes at Loudon and Nelson. Let's talk about you have in your poster. There's a picture of you with your arms sort of wrapped around each other. It almost looks like a wrestling move. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Cuban style of salsa and well really any ad advanced dance form can get very twisty and very pretzely with complicated moves. What we've learned in our travels and our study in Havana is that Cuban dancers are not always doing fancy moves. Really the, the joy of Cuban style salsa dancing is feeling the music and how you move your body. We find it to be a much more relaxed style of salsa dancing compared to um, ballroom style, which people might see when they turn on the TV, Dancing with the Stars. It's very, it's very rigid. They're the very, ballroom style? Yeah, it's very, they're very rigid. They look like they've got a board strapped to their back. I haven't seen that show, but I have seen mm -hmm. it done in ballroom dancing, right. and it is very rigid. So Cuban style salsa, it's much more relaxed. Um, the, the style of modern Cuban salsa dancing is... Uh, has roots from Afro-Cuban uh, folkloric types of dances. And so those are mixed in with the salsa moves, the, the, uh, the basic steps. And that, that style of body movement is what we hope to bring back from Havana and you know spread that fun throughout the Santa Cruz dance community. I don't think a lot of people realize the influence of Africa on Cuba. And I know I didn't until I went there to visit and I saw a huge show in a cave in the middle of kind of nowhere it was like a it was like a las vegas review mm -hmm. and it was quite a long um evening which was fine because there's plenty of rum and cigars you know it was all good but um then this told the story of the africans coming into cuba and how they melded into society and how part of their identity remains in cuba today so i think that that's very interesting that you would say that because a lot of people are not aware of that Look, chris when did you start doing i mean People, to be really honest with you, some guys would say, well, you know, it's not really a sort of a manly thing to do. I don't agree with that, but <laughs> some folks would think that, you know, doing that for a living was not, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm not going out there and moving large pieces of machinery and rah, rah, like that or being doing an internet startup. What brought you to dance? Um, I think it's just uh, meeting people, getting out. I was one of the, the guys who would be watching others dance. And I would just watching them. I was very intimidated to go out. I didn't feel um, secure enough to dance until I met the right teacher. And that was in 1999. 
It was a teacher who was fun, he was non-intimidating and welcoming. And these are some of the char characteristics we try to do in our classes. And that made me keep going. And suddenly I was dancing with all these beautiful ladies and, and I could show off. And, and this is exactly this excitement and that feeling is what we try to bring on the dance floor for everyone, for, for men and for women. And so were you one of those archetypal two left feet guys? Yep, I was one of those guys. Really? Yeah. And now you're teaching salsa? And now I'm teaching salsa. We keep going and uh, every year we intensify our study. Like we, not, we, do, we do not only go to Cuba, we travel around the world. We went to, uh, to Russia, to China, Japan, of course, and we go to Europe. But Cuba really is one of the trips which helps us to to be a better dancer and, and um, notice moves on, and muscles on your body you, you never knew about because it's all about how you move your body to, make, to be, enjoy great dancing. So that gave you confidence? That gave me confidence, that keeps me going. The music is happy. It it's is a, happy music. It's, everything is happy. You, vacation music. It's vacation music we bring uh, on the dance floor and you, you have fun, you have a good amount of exercise and you learn something and you can go out, you actually can do partner dance with someone. Even if you've not danced with someone before, you can do that. You can do that. I think uh, what I say during our classes, if you can walk, you can dance salsa. Because it's, it's very simple. It's just step, 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 step. That's all it is. It's not cha-cha-cha, mambo or, or, or tango. It's very simple. It's easy, easy to do. It's sexy, though. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. it is you get the body movement in there. It is a sexy mm -hmm. movement. I yeah. mean, when, you, when, I saw, when I saw the dancing in Cuba that I saw, perhaps not was the level that you were looking at yourselves, but like, holy cow, that's hot stuff. Mm -hmm. So let us talk about perhaps... Um, well, let's start with you, Jessica. When did you then um, start dancing and why did you start dancing? I have a background as a professional dancer, a ballet dancer um, in, my, in my youth, um, in, the, in my previous life. And uh, then I came to salsa dancing pretty much when I moved to Santa Cruz in 1998. Um, started checking out some of the classes at the Palomar Ballroom. Um, and I found uh, this Cuban style of salsa in 2003. That's when I met uh, Chris and have really enjoyed exploring that type of um, social dancing. Very, very different from technical, uh, refined ballet dancing um, and, and really a way to enjoy music and enjoy uh, a partner dance connecting with people. Did you find that your ballet training was helpful or irrelevant? Ballet training taught me that how to memorize sequences of moves, definitely. So that's always inside me, whatever style of dance that I'm doing. Um, I'm able to put together sequences of moves for choreographies. Over the years, our group has done performances in various community festivals um, or salsa festivals. There's a big uh, Cuban-style salsa festival that happens in San Francisco every year in February. And uh, we've performed with that. So over the years, being able to use my professional dance background for things like choreography and rehearsals. Um, but the style of movement in, in Cuban salsa is very different from ballet, obviously. It's yes. much, much more relaxed. So then listening to us right now, we probably have got, say, a middle-aged gentleman who might be a little bit out of shape we've probably got a middle-aged lady who's maybe divorced and she's like oh, i don't know if i could do that what would you address to either of those two people who might be lonely who might need to get out and exercise what encouragement would you give them to come to your classes mm. well um that's how how i was <laughs> is it you gotta get out you gotta get you gotta move your your butt off the couch and um you gotta be ready to get out um, the nice thing on this kind of dance is we change partners a lot. We are welcoming, we are non-intimidating. I say, just get out, do it, we help you. And we welcome Start you. dancing the first day when you, when you come to our classes. You start dancing right away. Uh, for the last couple years, we've offered a really popular salsa crash course, which is a one-month intensive series through the city of Santa Cruz Parks and Recreation. So sell out very fast, actually. Everyone who gets that catalog will be able to turn to the dance section and find our salsa crash course. The next round for that is uh, starting in October. October the 3rd. So that's yeah. Wednesdays, 7 to 8 p.m., downtown at the Loudon Nelson Center. And you're also not very expensive. 
Oh, no. It's very inexpensive. Um, we try to really be very accessible. We have a super discount for students at only $2 per class. For our beginner drop-in classes, when we're not running the series through the Parks and Recreation, we also offer a two-for-one uh, whenever you come special. 